Mitchell Center, where we start a packed slate of New Year's Eve college hoops on FS1 with a Big East battle in Newark as the St. John's Red Storm visit the Seton Hall Pirates. It's early in Big East play, and second-ranked UConn leads a pack of three unbeatens in the league, while St. John's has dropped two straight, and Seton Hall seeks its first league win. And we say hello, courtside, alongside Jim Spinarkle, Jack Benjamin with you. St. John's began 11-1. They've lost two in a row. Seton Hall 0-3 to start Big East play for the first time in more than a decade. Two teams desperate here today to end 2022 the right way. Yeah, and Jack, what that win would mean is just confidence going forward, getting a win here either side, but they both play equally tough defense. They're aggressive at that end of the floor. They're not shooting the ball real well from the three-point stripe. One of these teams shoots 33, 35% from the three-point line. They could very well win this game this afternoon. Today's starting lineups are sponsored by Jeep. There's only one. There's Mike Anderson, fourth season as the St. John's head coach. His team coming off a tough loss to Marquette. Here are the starting lineups sponsored by Jeep. There is only one. The second leading scorer for St. John's, David Jones, he will not start due to illness. He is available to play. Casey Indefo for Seton Hall returns to the lineup after coming off the bench at Marquette. Stop the streak of 62 straight starts for that guy. Shaheen Holloway, year one leading his alma mater, said they lacked urgency in the loss last time out against Marquette. Once thought to be the dark horse of the conference, we have one team in the building today acting like the clear-cut leader of the group. Mountain West Conference action brings us to Laramie, where the Wyoming Cowboys go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the New Mexico Lobos. And hello, everyone, with Bill Herenda. I'm David Gascon. Thanks for joining us today on FS1, where, Bill, we get a first-hand look at a New Mexico squad that's playing at a blistering pace, a perfect 13-0. Yeah, flawless. This is a team that not just plays with each other, but for each other, and they play very hard. And they do. Jalen House has been lighting everybody up in the conference. He did so with Wyoming last season as well. Yeah, 34 points and a win at the pit against Wyoming when the Cowboys were 22nd last February. So no Graham EK this season so far for Wyoming. They have had other guys step up, though. Reynolds has gone for five of his last six games. He's gone for 20. He averaged three points last season, averaging 15 this campaign, 54% from the floor, 39% from three. So, Bill, take me through the starting lineup. First for 13-0 New Mexico. It's not just Jalen House, is it? No, it really isn't. This is a systemic group that produces on both ends of the floor. They say playing hard in the NBA is a skill. Coach Patino is getting that out of this crew for sure. Now, the other side for Wyoming, 5-8 and eight so far in this campaign for Jeff Linder. He mentioned to us earlier in the week, it is a challenging season for him. Obviously, with no Graham EK, Hunter Maldonado, his numbers are down so far. Yeah, so they had that great two-man game, but without EK, listen, he was one of three guys in the country that averaged at least 20 points and nine rebounds last season. And like Einstein says, not everything that counts can be counted. I always feel like uh, coming home when I come to Howard. I always come here not as a stranger, but as one who loves this institution of learning and as one who has a deep sense of gratitude for all that Harvard University has done for our nation, and not only our nation, but for the whole world. where two prestigious HBCU institutions with histories dating back over a century and a half collide in the MLK Classic. Howard and Morehouse on a very special Monday Night College Hoops presentation on FS1. We welcome you inside Bird Gymnasium, which dates back to 1963 when it first opened up here at Howard University. Laval Jordan, Jason Ross Jr. Laval, we've talked about it all day long. Just so special to have these two HBCU schools on our air tonight. No doubt, Jason. When you're talking about Martin Luther King Day, you're talking about the power and reminding everybody in our country the power of unity and coming together. And what better way to honor Dr. King's legacy than bringing two of the most prestigious HBCUs together tonight. Should make for a tremendous game and a tremendous honor to Dr. King and his legacy. Couldn't have said it better, my friend. We had a chance to listen to both locker rooms prior to the game. Ready? Yes, sir. Hey. 
talk about life all the time, you know, when teams have wins like we had on Saturday, how do they bounce back the next game? Right? Like, let's create and let's work on having good habits day after day, day after day. What did you say today about Huddle? Return on investment. Return on investment, right? We got to invest today. If you guys come out here tonight and you play defense the way Morehouse basketball knows, we're jumping to the ball, we're protecting the gaps, we're closing out on all shooters, we're boxing out hard, we're going to get rebounds, if we don't turn the ball over, you will win this game. Okay? Welcome back inside Bird Gymnasium. Heard the two head coaches chatting with their squads before the game. Both sides coming off close victories. It is a rocking atmosphere inside the Burr, as they like to call it. As always, our tonight's starting lineups are sponsored by Buick. Now, Laval, you look at these two starting lineups, and Shukwabuka Nawafor is one to circle on the Morehouse side. For Howard, they've got several talented players. Elijah Hawkins really stood out at the guard spot. Yeah, Elijah Hawkins is the stick that stirs the drink for Howard. Um, you know, he's leading them in in points and assists, and he's the guy that, that starts the engine for this Howard group. Freshman of the year last year, and he's a player to watch. Uh, keep an eye on him because of the Morehouse pressure tonight and how they change up their defenses. But he should be able to handle that tonight. We'll see. You see the D.C. native Kenny Blakeney in his fourth season as the head coach for Howard. In Champaign, 28 degrees outside, but inside the State Farm Center, it is packed, it is loud, it is warm as they get ready for Michigan State and the Fighting Illini. Michigan State has won seven in a row, hottest team in the conference. Purdue with a win tonight, 5-1 in league play. Michigan State just behind them, and then Illinois, after an 0-3 started conference action, has won two straight. And with that, we welcome you courtside, everybody. Brandon Gordon, Casey Jacobson, thrilled to be with you for Friday Night Hoops in the Big Ten. I mentioned it, Michigan State's won seven in a row. Illinois had stubbed their toe. They have righted the ship. This should be a fantastic game. One of the best matchups in all-college basketball tonight. You know, the last three weeks, I think we've seen what Michigan State can become. They're now finally getting healthy. Malik Hall is back in the rotation. And A.J. Hogard, their point guard, has kind of taken the reins of this team. But Illinois is really confident as well. And if they need to get back into the Big Ten race, they got to protect their home court tonight. Helps to have 15,000 screaming behind you. Here are the starting lineups for Michigan State. A.J. Hogard, second in the conference in assists. He sets the table for the Spartans. Terrence Shannon for Illinois, averaging over 18 points a game. 